Every once in a while, a game comes along that is just so beautiful. You don't care what type of gameplay it has or if it's even fun. You only want it because it's pretty. My name is Lyle. Welcome to Lyle's Indie Corner. Let's talk about some really good looking games. But quickly, before we get into it, what do you think is the best looking game ever? We start the list off with a controversial pick. But if I didn't set out to sow discord, what am I even doing on YouTube, right? <laughs> I know a lot of people were disappointed by Scorn, and I get why. The trailers promise an action horror game with lots of shooting and grossness. And while the game definitely has a lot, and I mean a lot, of gore, the gameplay was more of a walking simulator paired with a mist style of puzzle solving. While the combat felt really sluggish and just ended up making you scream not out of terror, but frustration. <laughs> I personally liked the game, but I also went in knowing what to expect, so that certainly helped. But I think everyone still agrees that it's gorgeous in its aesthetics. Inspired by the works of H.R. Giger and Zdzisław Pekszynski, Skorin finds beauty in the weird and terrifying. It also does not shy away from body horror. On the contrary, if you're squeamish about this type of stuff, stay away from the game, it is not for you. While Giger, who worked on Ridley Scott's Alien, brings the biomechanical elements to Skorin, Bikshinsky is credited for inspiring the dystopian surrealism. And you see plenty of both here. App Software understood how to bring these two art styles together to give you this truly alien world that is so vast and makes you feel so small. There are a few different biomes and it all feels hostile and off-putting while staying fascinating at the same time. The icky creature design is the cherry on top. Everything feels wrong and it does so on purpose, but you still can't help but stare and be entranced by the art around you because it feels alive and like there is so much more to these places than you will ever know. The cosmic horror vibes are off the charts and I found myself in awe of what was on display. While the game might not be for everyone, there's no denying how unique and amazing the art design truly is. Scorn knows how to build atmosphere and how to keep it alive and that is in no small part due to its distinctive looks. Another horror game inspired by the old Resident Evils, Signalis has some beautiful pixel art on display that really blew my mind when I played it. It's so detailed. The short cinematics you get to see in flashes every once in a while are simply amazing. That this one even made it on the list is astonishing to myself, because, confession time, I don't like anime art. I know I know I'm a heathen, but it's usually not something I find aesthetically pleasing. Just personal taste. But Rose Engine somehow managed to get me on their side with Signalis. The sci-fi look and the unsettling interiors of the space station were fascinating to me. Blacks and browns dominate, but then you also have this intense red that flashes every once in a while in certain screens. And again, the pixel art is incredibly detailed and beautiful. They keep up the tense atmosphere for the whole 10 hours was playing time with the narrow corridors, the spooky lighting and the absolutely creepy enemy designs. As I said, you're exploring a space station, or are you? And every level has its own unique look and goes from a very clean but empty sci-fi setting down to these blood and crusted metal grates that give you tetanus just by looking at them. The animations are very smooth and the wriggling or spasming of certain enemies or characters make you uncomfortable and afraid and you really just want to leave and never come back. They they also managed to make items stand out very well, so you always know what's interactable and what's not. Character designs are, as I said, very anime and to me the least interesting part about the game. But I'm sure some people out there will have much more appreciation for them than I do. But all around, such an engaging design choice that they use to perfection. Do I need to say more than the game's name? Hollow Knight, with its hand-drawn art, the understated colors and bug-like character and enemy design is a staple of the indie gaming scene. Not many studios have managed to capture a unique look quite like Team Cherry has. The cutscenes look like they are from an animated movie and frankly, this should be an animated movie. Look at all this!
Smooth animations are 100% necessary for a tough Metroidvania like this one. And we all know, if you die, you can't blame it on the frame rate in Hollow Knight. The quality is insane and was obviously a priority. Hollow Knight does impress with its gothic art style not only through the character design, but also through the environments. The whole map feels like you're in some underground bug burrow, but it keeps changing in the most incredible and visually stunning ways. You have your starting town dominated by blue and grace, but also this infected part of the world where orange blobs make your skin crawl and where you immediately know you better not get too close or it will hurt you. But it all has this organic feel to it. The materials used are obviously taken from nature and look just right for the civilization. The creature and enemy design is also absolutely fantastic. And we all know Hornet is our favorite, right? The bug friend that's used for fast travel is a strong contender as well. By the way, Team Cherry, is Six on ready anytime soon? Sorry, had to ask. Hollow Knight is not only a satisfying gaming experience once you learn its mechanics and understand how bosses work, it's also just a joy to travel around in. There's always something to see and something to appreciate. Until a slug swallows you. Who doesn't love to fight their way through ancient Greek mythology? No, I'm not talking about the original God of War. I'm of course talking about Hades, Supergiant Games roguelite indie hit from 2020. While the gameplay has always been a bit too much for my brain to handle, I'm old in internet years, okay? I've always loved watching people play. Not just because their skill was impressive, but also because this game is just fun to look at. The comic book style is drop dead gorgeous, and I'm sure everyone can find something they like with all the different characters on display here. The bright colors and overall entertaining tone of the game give it this lightness that it needs to be motivating. You will die a lot playing Hades, but you will rarely be mad at it because there's always something to unlock even in failure. While you slowly work your way through the different levels and get closer and closer to leaving the underworld, you will find many beautiful environments and even more beautiful gods that give you boons on your run and that you can also befriend. Even romance some of them. And with them being so extremely beautiful, you will surely not say no to that. If this turns out to be some sort of dream, I will be very, very mad. Hades is also delightfully queer, which makes me especially happy. But even besides the gods, whether you're fighting in Tartarus or Elysium, your eyes will always have something to feast on. That is, if you can take them off the action long enough to actually enjoy all the great art around you. But if not, the enemies are also something to look at and be happy about. Or scream it, I don't know, those two things are just so close together sometimes. The art manages to stay on course and definitely evokes ancient Greece and brings to life so many of its charming heroes and villains. And while the environments definitely change, they are cohesive. Hades is a gorgeous game that knows how to entertain and keep you going. And it's such a well-deserved second place. Shout out to my amazing editor, The Potato Witch. If you want another game with some beautiful pixel art, go check out their video on Little Witch in the Woods. And finally, my number one, and frankly the reason why I wanted to make this video, The Pale Beyond. With this one, Bellular really concentrated on what they knew they were good at. Writing, music and art. It comes together beautifully in a visual novel resource management game that took my heart by storm way before I could ever play it. I just randomly saw some pictures of it on Twitter one day and decided I was in love. I know how superficial of me just going off of looks, but I'm happy to say that the game itself turned out really really good. But these character portraits are just unbeatable for me. I want graphic novels with this style and with this crew because I love them all. And I would like to adopt all these dogs please, thank you! While having very little animations, the Pale Beyond manages to keep you engaged throughout because the writing and art work so well together. The faces always match the mood the writing asks for and you're emotionally connected even though you never hear a spoken word. I find that very impressive and don't even get me started on the absolutely fantastic environments. Who knew that ice could be so gosh darn interesting to gawk at? I didn't! But Bellula took advantage of real life footage, giving the ice different shapes and and through that a certain power that humans are pretty helpless against.
with the different light sources they used, be it the sun at different times of day, candles, a hot burning furnace or even an aurora, there's always color splashes that make the screens interesting and get your eyes to wander. And compared to something like Hades, you actually do get the time to take it all in. I just sat there sometimes looking at the screen doing nothing but enjoy what I was seeing. That doesn't happen to me with many games, but it happened with The Pale Beyond and that is why it's my number one. If you want more of me, go check out my top 5 video of indie game spoilers that ruin the experience. Don't forget everyone, let's be weird together.